Okay. Cool, cool. All right, we are on time. Wow, that's shocking. I know. So uh, <laughs> definitely need to uh, look at our uh, streaming solution in the future. I think. <laughs> um, anyways, let's uh, let's begin. So, welcome to the half yearly update. We're in June, midway through, and we're going to basically give you a quick quick run through of the updates on the project, um, where we're at, and obviously those of you that are joining us from the Discord side, the Alpha 5 announcements that we've been able to put in place for you all. So to start with, um, I'll jump straight into letting Jose update you all with um, what's been going on with the game from his point of view, and then we'll go through the team. All right, thanks for that. Um... Well, um, the Alpha 5 content is still being on the way. Um, a lot of the work so far right now is more focused on the theme so far. Uh, but recently, it has been just pure backend. Um, a lot of the visual stuff that you're going to see is going to look relatively the same. However, um, it has been just a lot of stability fixes, a lot of um, making sure the game doesn't crash a lot. Uh, and making sure a lot of cases that I've been seeing from internal testers on the dev team that have been able to find by using um, types of methods like uh, mouses or touchscreens. So if you remember, again, we, as a, as a reminder, we used keyboards or we can use mouse to move around and content like that. First, the first major thing I would like to show today is the fact that we now use a different settings menu right here. Um, it's different from the typical service menu that you often see here. Uh, now it's divided into multiple sections. You see you have sections for game, controls, sound, graphics, acceleration, sound. It's still in the works, but it's just to give you an idea how it works. Uh, and as you can see here, this is using the same options menu, option list module system that is for the player options, just to kind of showcase the modularity of this. So, for example, we can have things like options that choose other kinds of themes. We can apply options and booleans. We can change the languages. And as an addition of this, with changes to the Alpha 5 score, we can do these updates live, even on system-wide items, things like that, with other languages. Uh, right now, the list is set so because translations uh, so far. You can also do the typical accessing sub-menus and having different kinds of menus with labels on top of them and objects like that. Uh, but as, as a better example for this, we can show it by going into actual gameplay. Now, in actual gameplay, uh, you'll see that since last time, screen is relatively the same. Um, but there's a couple of new changes. For example, um, I guess uh, a pack that I can know of that has not... Yeah, so we're gonna get started. Uh, we're gonna go to where up to just to kind of have an example. Um, so, as you can see, we have your typical text um, item. You'll notice that the text right now has changed. Now it's lowercase, but that's for a reason. Now we have support to output uh, the name of the chart directly in the difficulty. Um, and if this depends if your chart actually supports it, it can be either. Oh, is it too loud on stream? Let's lower the volume then. So these can output the text um, as is. It can either be the name of the chart. It can be the name of the um, the author of the chart. It can be the description of the chart if it's a legacy chart. But if it's a full text, a full version of the text, it'll look like this. You have the title of the chart on the top, author at the bottom. If it just has the author name, it'll just show at the bottom. Another major feature added to this new build, you'll notice that this text is actually sliding with fade and everything. There's actually now a new module that you can just put in your themes in the UI framework which is called text fade. And what this actor is, is essentially an AFT revised block that allows you to have text that slides within a place of text. So you, know, you don't have to worry about having text becoming too cramped on a very tiny space. Best example that I can think of is talking book. I, I'm sorry, uh, Daniel, if I mispronounced this so badly. <laughs> uh, so let's play the song, for example. You'll notice the text on the title script, on the, the song title, and even the group banner 
uh, the group text now begin to slide to showcase the whole text without having to cramp it. Uh, you can customize essentially almost everything on the thing. You can customize its width, its height, the, the, how fast it scrolls, uh, how much, how long it takes before beginning to scroll, and some other items. Um, another thing to mention on this is also the options menu here. If we go here on this menu, you'll notice that now we have uh, optional options items that can be added. So for example, if you enable an item, oh look, here's now a completely new menu that you can access when this option is enabled. This is also part of the UI framework if you would like to use it inside of option list. Another back in... in yeah, there was someone who was very when the game was too loud, so... Uh, still too loud. Okay. Now I'm like down at 10%. <laughs> That's alright, though. I was adjusting um, the volume too on my end. Um, we'll keep it at 30, you adjust it. Um, so yeah, for example, we can have items like only grab, show for grab, and items like that. Another thing that is still very early on in the works right now, but I can showcase a little bit, is the fitness screen. Uh, that is having a bit of work as there is quite a lot of people that would actually want a fitness mode in the game. And how this looks is essentially, um, if it shows up, reload it. It would just look something like this right now. Uh, it would separate it if it's two players, but you can, um, as progress comes around, um, you'll be able to adjust goals, either calories or time, use sessions, change profiles, um, if you want to use another profile to manage your uh, settings, it's constant like that. But let's actually go to gameplay to showcase how it looks in fitness mode. As you can see, right now in fitness mode, we have now a new item, which is the progress time. This shows how long you are right now in the session, uh, in case you would like to be playing with uh, the timer goal, if you want to play by a set amount of time. Later on, I will add a setting to make this timer only count the amount of time you in gameplay rather than all menus, as it's doing right now. Uh, but just to kind of give you an idea of how it works. Another feature uh, in here is now... Um, um, speed mods um, have been tweaked a little bit. Uh, because so far, uh, if you ever mess with mods files or course mods and you try to use speed mods like A mod or C mod, um, C A mod, it wouldn't actually apply immediately. But now you actually can. If you go to a song and apply its speed, you can now actually tweak the speed for N mod, A mod, and C A mod because the previous one was actually just stuck to only applying it once and then not doing it. Uh, so that's been fixed. Uh, it's possible we actually will get a backport this to the next Alpha 4, because it is actually it is actually simple enough, it, it's actually an unmerge. Uh, shouldn't actually have problems merging it over. Um, another thing, let's actually show again this, this fitness mode. You'll know that here, since I'm only on the timer mode, uh, it's only going to show the clock. So let's actually switch the goal type uh, for a moment. If the window wants me. There we go. Just give me a moment while I switch the mode. If anyone wants to talk about some other topics here, I will let you just for them. Yeah, I can, um, I can talk about the uh, some of the back end fixes. Um, are, you, are you here, Jaws? Is he alive? Yeah, I'm here. All right, do you want to um, have a have a bit of a discussion about you know the, the work you've been doing with the new modes and what you've been fixing? On well, one, Alpha Four, or Alpha Five. Either or, they're a bit of both, really. A lot of well, our, a lot our viewers won't know, won't won't have followed everything, so we might as well uh, yeah. talk about both. On Alpha Four, I've been fixing a lot of the pump stuff, so we have. Uh, a lot of pump fixes, so pumps should play a lot better now for your pump and up fans out there. Um, yeah, I should well, probably showcase you. For uh, Alpha 5, I've been uh, basically rewriting half the engine because uh, we're going full modular. But if you know Ritual Arts, you know how it has different emulators built in. Well, we're going to have different simulator parts, which you can just, uh, like, like if, if you want to cap, 
and you have like a, a, a beat mania cap and you want to put beam me on it like just to you know an old beat mania cap you want to put beam me on it just to restore it and keep games on to play well you don't need dance in it you don't need all the other game ones in it so what if you just had the module files you just put it in the uh, module folder and only loads those well i'm working on a system that does that so it will have all the modules as DLLs or SOs or uh, dying lips and you can just load the libraries you want and we are going to add support in the future while I'm at this planning so you can make your own parsers you can make your own parsers and then you can just load whatever uh, file there is out there so you just make your own DL it's going to be a template with all the information about what you need to compile it and you can modify the template you can make your own parser and then you can load your own files yeah we're we're looking at um we've, we've already done the modularization for the parsers already haven't we and now for file yeah. preview um so that's the same thing if you don't if you don't want to support any particular mod um sim file format uh for example if you're never going to plan to play Tyco. We don't really need to have the Tyco support there, do we? So you know, you can just not include those, not include those those files in the back end, so the game doesn't load it, and it'll. Uh, it means basically we're moving away from the static system that um, Legacy Step Mania had, and moving yeah. to a dynamic loading system. For example, Alpha Five will have um, in-game resetting. So if you change the resolution, or if you change a sound driver or an input driver. We don't have to go all the way back to the beginning of the game to do so. It will just do it in the options menu, reload the context, and then reboot the driver for you. And again, with the drivers, if you only want to, if you know what hardware you've got in your cab, or you know what hardware you're building your Outfox-specific um, device with, you can just grab the modules that you need and load them as as required. So you know, if you want to go with Sapi or um, ASIO, when we finish writing those drivers for Windows, you know, the ultra low latency and you want to play with MIDI controllers, you can just load those drivers in and ignore everything else. So yeah. it's it's a very powerful system for you to give you multiple compatibility and customization. Because a lot of people, again, it was, you know, we do pick up on this feedback. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, well, I'm never going to play, you know, the other 82 modes that Outfox supports. And it was like, well, yeah, you don't have to. But it, you know, it's a case of making sure that we we provide a, a solution for those people that do. So, you know, we're we're looking at what you know the working museum paradigm, and those folks that just want to play dance or they want to play pump or they want to play a specific mode only. You know, we've had several people with new cab projects. We've got um, several restorations working at the minute with DS3DDX, and that's the four and five panel. We've got um, some old very old pump restorations that are working without Fox and there's, there's you know, like what Jao said with um, you know, old 2DX cabs that have long, long lost their hardware. And, and that's what it's about. It's about um, adjusting and, and providing a way to stop everything going to landfill or, you know, creating waste that we can restore and re recycle. You know, we've got to think of the environment here and it's a case of Lero, is the top of the screen missing on your on your stream preview? I just noticed we're not we haven't got the we haven't got the title bar. Well, on uh, I got the title bar. Yeah, but I can't see it on I can't see it on Twitch. Oh, I can no, now. I can. Hold on. I can now. No, it's, it is it, it's me. It's just my stupid display. Um, right. So that's what it's about, you know. This project, and you know, originally started as something else it's morphed into something completely different and as a as a team we've just gone with it so you know hope again you guys all will join us and uh, keep keep the ride going really so but the the main parts that i i'm, I'm going to be focusing on obviously for alpha 5 is we'll be having brand new sound drivers we've got to modernize the ones for linux mac and Windows specifically, because unfortunately Windows is suffering at the moment with the Windows 11 updates. So I've got to, we've got to look at modernizing, but we're probably just going to be going um, straight into ASIO and Wasapi support. We'll keep the old um, wave out for Windows 7, but to be honest with you, it does support a form of ASIO, so you can probably get away with using the lower latency drivers. And there's, you know, the uh, 
pipe wire improvements for Linux as well. So yeah, they'll be they'll be added to the engine at some point in the near future. Can't really think of anything else to say. Yeah, can you jazz off the top of your head? Well, because we are making this module system, this also means we can port stuff from older games or older Stamina versions back into the game we have. Like at the moment, everything is so DDR paradigm or dance paradigm and so focused on one thing. If we make everything modular, we can change everything the way we want it to. So, for example, we can have an SMX mode for people that like the really old Stamina 3.9. So you can have the old gameplay of that with all the old scoring and everything. You just have to need the module and you can have the experience. Yeah, uh, 3.9 mode has definitely uh, been requested a lot. So yeah, we'll probably be able to do that. And some of the bits from SM4, I know people would love to have in uh, as a modular option. So we can definitely yeah. do that. You know, something like that. So... Yeah, and obviously we've got the online system that will be launching with Alpha 5 as well. So that's something that will be coming along. Um, it will be it will support all modes. It's not just going to be one mode specific. And um, we'll look at start starting to do like registered and uh, hashed sim files and things as we get along. We will start building that database up, obviously, because we we do support like. 14 different sim file formats so we've got to work out um <laughs> yeah we've got to work out what we're going to do for tyco we'll probably follow um mm. the paradigm of what tjdb are using um, because that keeps it consistent we will um, likely do the same for some of the bms md5 hashes so we work with the courses and stuff like that for the old lr2 system so we'll we'll probably support the LR2 system, but transfer them into something that Outfox can use a little bit more streamlined. Um, and again, we've got the, the what they call the dot .def for um, DTX Mania. And again, um, I can use the .def files definition. The dot .def, so it's definition in, in, um, in terms. It just means that we can um, define things in the group. We'll also have like specific uh, bits and pieces for other modes as it, as it comes along when we find out. And yeah, the game's louder again, so someone's like not managing the audio here. So moving forward, it's quite a good future. Um, and yeah, I think we'll. I think uh, Jose, are you ready to talk again? I guess I can. Yeah, there is a couple of things actually. Um, as mentioned um, before the stream, there's also uh, some extra things also added for Alpha Five that uh, a bit more global in the sense. For example, uh, we now are what well, it's still in development, but we now have a console prompt um, that has been worked on by by Kid, Mr. Red Kid, uh, for Alpha Five. That essentially is a full console that allows you to write stuff like text files if the keyboard loves it. So just type a sentence, output it, it's just a word. Maybe you want to go to another screen? Okay, well, go to a new screen. Maybe you want to go back to a uh, screen title menu, let's say. I go there, outputs it. Oh, look, I am now in the other menu. And on content things like that. Uh, you can just um, process uh, Lua commands in it, also process any namespace, global element that happens to be in the uh, Malfox space. Um, okay, but you want to add something more extra since you are the one that made it. <laughs> you can also see what's inside in whatever actor frame you get. So if you were to do screen man colon get top screen, you'll be able to actually see what actors are inside there. Like that. My hands are on. There we go. As you can see, now we have an, a listing of every single actor index. As you can see, we have an actor, which is the underlay, and that contains an actor from the tilt tree, and that contains an actor container with 21 children, and the same with the overlay. And with an in and out, which are, yeah, because the in and out are just a single actor frame that has nothing in it, so it's just one child. Can you press <laughs> the F key to quickly go to the last command you used? Yep. Yeah, let's let's do a replay here to show it. And now this one contains some different actors. You see, we're now in Outbox Select Music because this is a little wheel. And we have different kind of amounts of children right now. Only seven in underlay, three in the main one, 
and just completely empty ones on the transition actors. Uh, in the meantime, we can also set um, some other things in here. I guess we could probably do game state. Let's uh, let's set a uh, what was the command for the mods? Get one. Uh, I believe I'm gonna show get the player state. Okay, game player. So let's do. Oh, I put out a play on this first. Okay. Yeah. So get player state. Let's since we're player one, we just use player one. And then we'll go and get the mods object at least. So, get mods object. And let's say I want to get the mods object for what I'm doing right now, which is mods level uh, strong. Uh, I think the function is called get player options. Oh, is it? You also player. don't need to push backspace to go all the way. You can just use the arrow keys. Oh yeah, there we go. So now we have player options. And now let's... Let's, I don't know, let's change the mini. Let's say I want to go half a mini. Oh look, we have, we are now changing. Changing the whole place. Let's just make it nothing. Or go back. You can just apply these commands on the fly if you would like to debug some elements, uh, test out some process, maybe output some commands. See if your, if your theme, mod file, or anything is working. In my case, I will have to apply some beat. Yeah, this will also be tied. This will also be tied in with a new um, F2 menu. The the biggest um, the biggest thing that will be changing for Outfox will we are changing F2 because there are loads of us obviously that have been in the middle of debugging and testing and things, and we've clicked the F2 button by accident. Um, the reload scripts and reload metrics and things like that will be a sub option of f2 f2 will be a pure modding debug so it's going to show you you know actors on the screen and things like that we're going to work it primarily just for modders um as we move forward with alpha 5 and we get like shaders you'll be able to see what shaders are active and things like that because we'll do we'll add commands that can just give you debug information by hitting f2 and then you've, you'll have your debug keys like you do with the f3 um debug as well, which is specific for mod files. So there'll be the option to restart, you know, clear mods, restart mods, kill all mods, things like that on the F2 menu moving forward. Um, we toyed with it before, but there were a lot. There was a lot of resistance for people who missed their F2. Yeah. But um, due to the fact that we'll add, we'll add the functionality inside F2. So in effect, there'll be two debug windows. F3 will be the debug for the main game, and F2 will be primarily there for modders and, and folks that want to debug themes or if they're looking at scripts and things like that, um, they'll be there. It's just to make things a lot easier for you guys. Um, the preview will be available for testing. We're about to announce that. That's what the whole point of this stream is. <laughs> um, that's, that's literally what this stream's about. We'll be announcing that shortly. Um, iOS port of Outfox, that's an, another Alpha 5 thing. Um, I'm in the process of working out the um, key, what's it called? The Alpha Flight. The test yeah. flight, I think it's called. It's test flight. Yeah, so Outfox's um, presence on the iOS store is actually permitted now, now that we've passed the, um, what do you call it? What's the, what's the thing? It's the it's the program, isn't it? I can't remember the name of it now. Oh my God. It's the developer program. Yeah, well. That was also the app certification. So. That's, the, that's the thing of, um, that's the thing that we're going to be, um, moving on to. So test flight will be available for um, iOS apps from 12 or higher once um, Joust and I finish doing the um, touch input for it. It's just a case of we've got to... The back buffer and front buffer on iOS devices are different sizes. So to make sure that we set the theming and touch adjustments and things like that for devices across you know, iPads, iPhones, things like that, um, make sure that they match. We've got to, obviously, one, do also do a, a vertical theme. Unless you want to play, you know, you can flip your flip your phone, obviously. But yeah, we'd have to do a, a horizontal and a vertical theme to make sure that yeah. the, the pixels and things line up. That's the funny so. part. Uh, no, Ryudo, no. Uh, Auto-play CPU is not getting replaced. Uh, 
the combo is counting up because this is a debug build, not a release build. A debug builds automatically count the judgment as a fantastic just to test out scoring. That's, that's, that's what they are, what it is. Uh, yeah, keyboard keyboard cases will work for iPad. Um, an iPad with the correct lightning to USB 2 adapter uh, will also work. That You can plug a dance mat in or things like that. Um, we've we've successfully tested it with an SMX pad and an <laughs> LTEC, so both of those will work perfectly fine on the uh, on the very the very 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 dirty test build that I built about four months ago. Um, you can run you can run a um, an actual dance mat on an iPad. Not sure why you would want to, but um, you can. So um, the, the 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 drivers. Um, the 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 drivers that we've got on Outfox um, override a lot of the gatekeeper issues that older Stepmania suffered from. So we don't have uh, we don't have like the keylogger warning or anything like that anymore because we uh, we adhere to the um, Apple standards that they wanted for for rhythm games. That's why you if you're if you're an Apple user you don't get the messages on Outfox anymore. So yeah, it's 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 pretty good. All right, so just before we do the the date for our steam launch has any um anyone else got anything to say Jas, you okay you got anything else to say kid no i don't really um, have anything else to add at the moment nothing here okay um, the IO performance is relatively okay um i've not tested i um i the old ipad os um but on the m1 based the, we I've tested it on an A12 arm, and obviously the new M1s. I've not tested it on any of the new uh, A chips. On the A12, Outfox averaged around 600 FPS, and on the M1, we average about 1400, which is extremely low. Actually, yeah, showing it right now, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a bit silly. Um, obviously, for battery life, you know, you can run us in uh, in, in VSync, and we're gonna we're waiting for we're waiting for the um, the tweaks that Mac are doing to Monterey to fix the uh, the, the funny FPS issues that they've got with the uh, with the draw. So yeah, Outfox has a, a bit of a weird thing going on with that at the moment. Um, the original M1 on the Mac Air, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's yes, the base. That's the base M1 Air. M1 Air. So I've got an M1 Mac Mini, and I get about 1900. Um, we we have someone that uses a, an M1 Max, and that's about 4000, which is ridiculous. Yeah, and so, it's actually going to the point that we have to consider actually adding a limit to. <laughs> yeah, we're we're probably going to have to do that. But for example, you know, if you want an ultra low powered cab, you know, an M1 Mac Mini running at Fox is super low powered. It's like 38 watts for your rhythm game cab. So it's it's pretty, pretty efficient. Um, we, we run... Also have a... Say again, Jeffs? We also have Raspberry Pi pills for people that want to go the cheaper way. That's is true. Is we, we've got Pi 4, haven't we? We, we yeah. run okay on. Yeah, it's not as powerful as an M1, of course, because M1 is pretty powerful, but it, it will run above 60 on the Raspberry Pi 4. And as we optimize, well, we've got the optimize, we've got to do the Raspberry Pi graphics. Yeah, we, yeah, we still need to do the graphics, we still need to do uh, the uh, um, glass. Yeah. Uh, I think if we do glass, we will have double the performance at least. Triple, actually, uh, easily. Yeah, yeah. Well, so it's, it's doing 60 on a Raspberry Pi. Using OpenGL, just just remember that. <laughs> yeah, and we're getting about 144, 144 FPS at 720p on a Pi 4, give or take. Um, so yeah, it's it's definitely playable. But obviously, you're 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 you're, you're encumbered with the, you know, you need a, a decent NVMe drive for speed. Otherwise, you're waiting on SD card reads and writes, which take an age. So, yeah. funny enough, I'm actually right now running uh, my profile on an SD card. So. You can kind of see the read speeds that the M1 is trying to do right now. Every time you like saving, for example, if I were to save right now, it took about like half a second from there, give it a take. 
Sometimes it can jump up to a second. It's kind of flaky how macOS kind of retests the cost um, when it comes to docs. So if you happen to if you happen to uh, play on an M1, uh, and if you want to play on an external dock, which is probably everyone because of how most people still use the USB-A ports, uh, mm -hmm. do you consider that because uh, performance is going to be a bit um, fluctuated depending on what dock you use for external devices or memory cards? Uh, that you want to use for profiles, so that's the situation. Because there will be moments that, for example, if I hit ready now, it'll as it, 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 you can see, it took like now it took about a second and a half, and this is the same SD card on the dock. So just keep that in mind. It can fluctuate a lot. Yeah. So all in all. Um, we have been busy. We don't, we, we've not been sitting on our laurels. <laughs> um, Alpha Four is still going to continue. Um, we're still going to be using it sort of as the like the public test bed for um, for folks for now, just uh, stabilizing it and, and moving it forward. Um, what yeah. are we thinking for retirement, Jas? What spring next year, give or take, or do you want to do it sooner? I say spring next year, give or take. Yeah, because uh, what we're doing right now is we're putting Alpha 4 in an LTS mode. This is a long-term uh, stable build. But we just do patches and updates to just make it stable uh, so people don't want all the new features directly. You just want a stable build like they used to, you know, the alphas they have. Then they find a little bug or a little issue, just report it to us. We'll fix it and we'll put it in Alpha 4 and in Alpha 5, of course, because we're going to put it upstream to our Alpha 5. But uh, Alpha 4 is going to be LTS, where we will have a stable build for people, of course still in Alpha, but it will be a stable build for people that just want to uh, not try all the new stuff. Of course we will have all the features, but if you have a cap and you have all the features, uh, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we got it. <sighs> hey, Beaver's killing me, excuse me. Alright, so... Moving on to the Alpha 5 testing program, because there's been a lot of questions, obviously, about this. Um, the proposed release date for our first Alpha 5 build, which will be Alpha 5.0.0. So we will start with the 5.0.0 uh, craziness, um, and that will be on Steam. And we're planning on putting that publicly for the first time at the end of... August, it will be August the 29th. That will be publicly available for people to download on all platforms, including Steam Deck, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, those of you obviously who are on the server, and if you're not on the server, come and join up and, and bug me and Joust because you know we, we like chatting to you folks. Um, there will be a 4.999 pre-release testing build, which you guys can sort of look at and spot and and, and basically play to find identifiable craziness a bit like what you know our pre-alpha is for alpha 4 and that will be starting on the around the middle of july so about a month from now um roughly i'd say around the 18th ish 11th to the 18th ish so if you're interested in that uh, there'll be a channel which you'll be able to click and there'll be a little thing in there that you can click that says i want to be part of the alpha 5 crew you'll get an Alpha 5 tester badge and then basically access to whatever Alpha 5 build you have on your, you know, if you're going to play it on deck or iOS or whatever, or, you know, we, we support so many bloody things. It's a lot to list. Um, and then basically you could, you will be able to give us feedback on that particular device and there'll be specific channels in the feedback channels that will have all the devices in that you, you we support. And you basically can just put your feedback in there, any bugs in there, so on. And basically what you what we fix for one thing will benefit others. And if it's a particularly nasty bug that obviously still affects Alpha 4, we'll backport accordingly. So in a nutshell, we will be releasing on Steam on the 29th of August. And we will be having the pre-release alpha testing program from the 18th of July. For those of you that yeah, are... And, uh... Willing and to go it, into monster monster territory. Second, yes. 
Yeah. If if there's a bug, like like a really really important bug, like we say we will backport it to Alpha Four, but if it's something really important that's if in the security works or something, we will probably backport it to to Stepania Three. Yeah. Yeah. There's 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 quite a lot of Alpha Four stuff that will be that's planned to go back to the Stepmania yeah. repo. Um yeah. as we move as we move forward to Alpha Five, their code for code's not gonna be compatible. But no. The stuff that's in Alpha Four will be, so we'll yeah. we'll look at backporting a lot of that to the public yeah. Alpha um, public Stepmania repo. Um, it will go open source, by the way, so don't worry about that. Yeah, and a lot of stuff first will go back to Stepmania where we fix stuff, and then when we're happy with the code base, we're happy enough. And of course, we can't release everything open source because we have Steam stuff. And Discord API and stuff, we, we can't release that. We have an NDA where we cannot release that stuff. But everything we've worked on and we can release, we will. Right, Squall? Mm-hmm. So you guys... Yeah, ever been... About. And we're still, having a, we're still having an open discussion with the SM side on yeah. either having our own branch. So we, we're Statmania, then Outfox. Or yeah. looking at um, maybe the Alpha 4 program going to 5.3. We, yeah. you know, relive the old number because we're not really breaking any APIs because we still support all yeah. the 5.1 stuff. Like Alpha 5 is a complete overhaul of the engine. Yeah, like but all the module stuff, we, we can't pour that back. But Alpha uh, Alpha 5 mm -hmm. stuff is not going to be code compatible. Yeah, it's, um, there's no way. So it, like it's the a module move forward. Stuff, the module stuff is going like, like I really had to change the insides and outsides of the engine to do all the module stuff. If, if, yeah. if, 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 if I were to... Uh, like a lot of people want or source because they want to backport fixes from it into uh, Setmania because they just want to have the dance game and have finally the dance game, which is fine. Nothing's wrong with that. But if we were to release Alpha Five and be like, "Here's here's the open source. We are going to open source. Don't worry. But here's the open source and have fun with it." And they're like, oh, we're just going to backport this, this, and this. If, if, if you look what I did to the engine to make this all work, you'll be like, what the fuck? This is pretty much it. It's a bit, it's a bit, yeah. It's so, not for me anymore, you would say. <laughs> yeah, so moving forward, it, it's a case of like, we, we're not going to go back on, on the promises, even if yeah, there are will release stuff. folks out there going, oh, you, you're evil, you're, you know, rah, rah, rah. And it's, it's like, yeah. It was never the plan. It was never the, the, plan. the problem is, last time I looked, it's our project. Yeah. Um, not being not being funny or selfish, but yeah, it's yeah. like you know, if like, we, we'll open like, source like, when we're ready, not when anyone else tells us. Like so. Scott said earlier, just join the server, talk to us. We're really open, we're really friendly. If I'm, if I'm not friendly, give me a give me a kick or something. Like uh, I don't oh, mind, man. I'm, I'm I'm always joking. And it's the same everything. as you know, yeah. we've helped we've helped other devs. We've you know we've yeah. worked with quite a few. Um, other indie developers over the last yeah. two years as well, which has been awesome. You know, they've come in and talked to th talk, talk to us about sound drivers and methodologies yeah, like on things. Like... It's been awesome. So, you know, like, you are uh, more than welcome to join and and just like, talk with us about code I'm, stuff and things. I'm not gonna name, I'm not gonna name names who they are, but there are a few people from other communities. This posted, by the way. Don't worry. I found the communities that came into our community and were like, "Hey, this is pretty awesome. Do you want to work together with us?" So like we're now working to design a new Tyco format or update the existing Tyco format to make a better one. And uh, there are people from the Germania community in our server that are like, oh, you're quite positive. And we're having a quite positive uh, little community, don't we, Squirrel? Yeah, it's been, it's been really good. And it's, it's just like... I don't think the Stepmania repo will accept the Alpha V engine as a merge. The thing is, no, it's because it's not code compatible. Um, it would have to be a different. It would have to be a different repo altogether. It won't. Yeah. It won't merge across onto the new branch. It won't so, merge. It, 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 will, it will break because they have changes and we have changes because we took beta one, I think, or pre beta one. It was pre beta one, yeah, just yeah. just before beta one came out. Yeah. So there's quite a lot of changes, but like if we were to, uh, if we, what was I going to say again? My my my, my thought went away. <laughs> well, um, we're still the reason why we've not, you know, done backporting and things yet is because there's still, it's 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 a bit of a a double-edged sword. 
Oh yeah, yeah that, that's what I was going to say. Like, I think Scrolls want to say the same, but like we, Scroll and I were thinking about, yeah, we can, we can throw everything we have back on the Step Mania repo right now if we wanted to, but is that what Step Mania is about? It's the, yeah, it's about the essence of what Step Mania is, is what needs to be confirmed mm. before we do anything further. Yeah, and like... SM5, SM5 content, is, we are backwards compatible, yes. Yeah. We will support back to basic SM files go all the way back to 2002, BMS is 1999, DTX is 2001, Tyco is 2004, OSU is 2006, Malady I think is like the first, second from the beginning revision. Yeah. Um, BMS on is 1.0 when that's finished. What else yeah. have we got? Uh, we, we got a lot, but like uh, quavers all the way through. But like, if you if you look at the source code of Step Mania, a lot of developers back in the day, like you had Chris Denver, which had was had a brilliant idea of making this step game. But then later, around the two era, he was like, "Oh, I can add BMS in this. I can add." whatever into it and a lot of committers throughout the year were like we just want this to keep a stepping game so uh we we, we don't want to we don't want to upset the community we just like if they want to keep it a stepping game it's fine step mania can be step mania and alphas can be out fox right now horsey that's that's to be discussed with natano um we, we're gonna like reach out to talk with the simply love devs in, in a little while about S uh, yeah. alpha v um, because it would probably be a lot easier if we could look at making their work um, as a Steam uh, Steam Workshop object. So when they're ready with an update, they can just push an object to the Steam Workshop, and then Outfox can download it that way. That's so cool. it's just basically you'll be able to put your themes. You know, we can authorize your themes on the Steam Workshop, or you can do it yourself. And then Outfox can download them automatically um, via the workshop system. So yeah. I think it would then not interfere with their development profile if they do an SM, you know, an Outfox object that they can just push straight to the workshop, and then we can keep keep compatibility. We've got no, you know, there's no bad blood between the two development no. teams. Um, all of that has is in the past, and you know, yeah. we're happy that um, Natano and and, and Tej and, and those guys have got a, a good community project working yeah. forward yeah. and you know we want to support them where we can so um what do you mean side loading also the uh the question about the sex test stream this yeah. was going to answer it in a sec but uh there was a little bug with the sex test stream that people were wondering about why it wasn't working it was because we weren't flushing the uh the file, so it wasn't saving directly to the file, which we have fixed. So if you have an old sex trade and you did it on the latest version, it should be fixed now. And for the sex, the, the new data, there was you were talking with who was against who? I was, yeah, for 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 sex that stream, um, we actually, I actually contacted uh, Peter May, the original creator from it from yeah. twenty fourteen, um, to discuss a little bit of including. Um, Basically, including some of the modifications and things that he made, and he's he's very much um, still active. Been busy with life, you know, life and family and everything. So, but there were several changes that he made to the drivers in 2017 and 2018 that we're going to work out and 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 see if we can improve functionality because there's there's quite a few other options that I'd like to add to the the sextet um, methodology, yeah. including DMX because it's a massively requested feature. Um, there's also going to be a USB DMX because a lot of people who play BMS, um, specifically in DTX um, people, they want to. We've got more channels than Sextet supports, so oh, yeah. it's a case of um, I'm looking at maybe adding a new DMX like driver, including a, a side loaded MIDI one as well because people can do this. You can do the same with a MIDI like driver controller as well. So we've already got all the framework for a MIDI lights driver. It's just a case that I've got to design the API hooks that you guys can, can connect to, um, especially for Mac and, and Linux. So um, no, you do not have to only download stuff with Steam. Um, Steam 
will have its mods folder as always, but yeah. you you will have a folder for content as normal. So um, Steam, uh, Steam additional, is additional optimal. song folders, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, will still work. So you can have your Steam version, and if you want to test Alpha Five, and then additional song fo folders to your Alpha Four or your SM5 build, for example, so you can do it that way. Also, the plan was to release a non-Steam version together with a Steam version. Yeah, so we're not we're not forcing everyone on Steam. We're not, not, not forcing. This is this, this is the Epic Game Store. We're not like get Borderlands free. No, we're not like that. We're not like that. Now we're going to make everything optimal. Same with the online system. We're not going to dial in, dial out instantly when you start the game. Everything is going to be optimal. So if you have a if you have a system is that it won't be completely offline because you're a false system and uh, you, you, you don't want all the dial in dial out information you can just disable the online system actually you have to enable online system I think with a question when you start the game is that what we're gonna do right scroll yeah it's it's opt in not opt out it's opt in that's why like, that's why like the Discord RPC and the Steam RPC will be if you've not got Steam running it will just uh, if, if it's a Steam build, naturally it will boot up Steam. Nice. But if it's not, if it's the non-Steam build, if Steam's running, it will show that you're playing Outfox. But if Steam's not running, it won't boot up Steam. So exactly. it'll be there's a separate there'll be a separate build for those folks on cabs or legacy devices that don't have Steam support. Because we're not we're not going to be we're not going to be pushing people. And obviously, all the pre-alpha stuff, what we call the Alpha Four Nine 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 system. That won't be on Steam because I'm not allowed to. I'm not allowed to do too many um, pre pre alpha builds yeah. on the Steam store, so I've got to do it in a specific way. Because we release way too fast. Some people release yeah. half a year, and we we do it like every month. <laughs> but what yeah. we've while well, we've got like a little bit of ten minutes or so at the end of uh, end of the chat, if you guys have got questions, feel free to bombard us. It's all good. Also, if people have like weird light drivers or whatever, and ones that aren't really copyrighted, where we get in trouble with, if people know what I'm, which one I'm talking about. But if there's any light driver or anything you want added to the game, hit us up. We, we even have a, a feature request on the Git tracker. Just, just, just request. We're always up for stuff. Mm -hmm. We've got no problems like adding new drivers. We're, we're going to probably be working with Altec as well in the future. Yeah. On their lights driver, we've got. I know Din's written some stuff that I'll uh, I'll give him a, a a nudge and see if make sure that we can support that properly. Yeah. Um, no, the online component actually will support Steam, so there'll be a Steam leaderboard if you want to do that. But it will be focused on Outfox Online. Yep, we'll use Outfox Online. Yeah, so it's it's a case of basically. Um, yeah. Again, you've got your choices. If you if you want to go via Steam and, and and play via Steam, you can. If you don't, you don't. So, it's all again, if you guys have got questions, ask in the Twitch stream chat or voice context in in our in our in our uh, Discord server. You can just uh, go ahead. Just ask for whatever you want. Yep. We'll answer everything. Everything. Aside the colourful male underwear. I'm just kidding. He'll, he'll, someone would ask. He'll just reply with, what underwear? <laughs> <laughs> the true work from home experience. Yeah, oh, it's so like shirt cool. tie, and then you've just got like your uh, your Bart Simpson boxer shorts underneath. Scroll, so, so I have a question for you if people might ask. Go on. What about merch? What about what? Merch. Stickers. Merch. Oh, merch. Uh, don't you have to ask that question? Um, yeah, the yeah. store's being built. I've got like loads of stuff that people were like wanting to <laughs> do. We, we're gonna have, we're, we are gonna have an Outfox merch store, so it'll yeah. be official. Because people have been stuff. poking at us saying they want the merch, like uh, stickers and everything. We, we are gonna make them. Yes, the, the lights driver and sensitivity per profile, yes. Um, I'm going to poke lightning um, in the future. Okay, well, I've got a few questions for him. Not like, you know, I don't need I don't need SMX source code or anything like that. It's more of a case of <laughs> um, I want to make sure that the pads are done in the way that they would prefer us to do it. Um, yeah. Because obviously when we worked on the SMX mode for Outfox, 
that was done in collaboration that we didn't just suddenly spring smx and go yeah here you go um you know it was done in with with collaboration and uh, and discussions with them so i'll reach out to lightning from the smx team and we'll we can work uh, uh you know we'll, we'll have a chat with carl and uh, and the other guys just to make sure that yep. any methodology that we do with the smx pad integration including um allowing you to draw um stuff within the game so you'll be able to draw your pad led um, pictures in the game using the touch panel or the mouse that all of that's done correctly and we can make sure the the packets and stuff are sent officially um, and again we'll because we're cross-platform we would make sure that that works on mac and linux as well and and, and yeah. raspberry pi arm but a case of you know we're just going to make sure that what we're planning fits within the paradigm of what they want in the driver moving forward so and there's a potential of Trying to work it no, we can't we can't port it back to SM5. We'd have to wait until Alpha 4 is in SM5 because yeah. they need the uh, they need the, they need our uh, USB updates that we did. So yeah, there's a potential for it to be back ported to SM5, but a, a, a cut down version. Yeah. So yeah, DCSL definitely on that point. Um, but again, we'll reach out to the SMX crew first. Um, to make sure what we're planning is okay and fits within the, you know, the SMX paradigm. Um, so yeah, all Don't good though. Don't step any boundaries. No, it, when you're working with a, when you work with an actual legal entity, you know, it's a case of they're letting us have a, an option for people to make customs, and yeah. I'd rather make sure that we honour that relationship rather than just go our own way and, you know, and I don't want to do that. So. No, oh, we don't. Uh, any other questions? Me when BMS gets mentioned. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I suppose you want you want BMS mentioned a bit more, do you, Daniel? Yeah. You do need to fix the uh, hidden layer. You uh, show up. Well, we've got the code for Miss, and we've got the code for all the other all the other layers. Yeah. It's just a case of we just need to draw the background layers. I think everything's actually there apart from the theme support. Oh, we've done it for because Pomu supports there. Yeah. So we've got the whole of because we've got background layer one, two, three, and four available for BMS and B and the extensions on BME, so they all work. And the miss layer on DTX works, even though it's not officially in the spec. <laughs> well, we support it. <laughs> yeah, and the same for Tyco. We actually we yeah. actually support the miss layer on Tyco as well because that's based off DTX, which has a direct uh, a miss layer. So yep. I might. Of course, of course. Will the chart preview module be supported from screen select music or is it only in player options? Chart preview module. Is it dev of field? It's it's just a dev not field. It's not a module, it's just a dev not field object that you can already do right now on Alpha. It's just in here, it's just a bit you could say integrated into this option system that I have right here that also you previewing of objects, for example, by attaching. Doesn't, doesn't infinitesimal like use um, use the preview in the mute? Yes. The wheel. yes. Yes, they, they also do. use that. No, can only ask. Yes. Yeah, so infinitesimal, like the, the pump, the pump thing that will be yeah. pretty much the default for Alpha Five, um, will be on player is on screen select music in pump. So yes, yeah, it's a def.note note field. It's a, it's a it, think if those of you that are NITG folks think of it as the extra players, but without the extra player stuff, it's just literally yeah the arrows like, and everything. Like with extra it's players, the limit was that you need a, a, a gameplay screen and then you have extra players. What if we remove the play out of the equation and just made an actor for people that don't know the dev system is where you have an actor frame actor and then basically the things that display on the screen. Like whenever you're theming. So what I did is I made a dev actor, which was a dev node field, which means on any screen, where if you just set the song by Lua or whatever, you can do a dev node field. And you can just yeah. display the song. I can actually show the, the window. I can show a small window. Actually, 
Do you have nested folders? Also, in Alpha there... Five, yes, we will be supporting yeah. nested folders. Mm -hmm. um, we're, also, removing, uh... we're removing the restriction that's on uh, on on SM because DTX, Tyco, and all the others use nested. So we're going to rewrite the yep. passing methodologies yep. to support that. Yeah, we, just, we probably just have to check if there's a file in it. If not, just if there's a folder, continue folder. Yeah, and remember, this is uh, available already on Alpha. Alpha Four, yeah. You're cutting a little bit out, Jose. No, that's some kind of reason. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. So, uh, funny question for the V5 testing role during the testing period. He wants a PS Vita. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, I suppose I could release a bit a uh, homebrew build, yeah. Yeah. Okay, is the feet are still protected, or? It's, uh, it's, uh... Or is, is it up for question, then? Yeah, well, it's abandoned now, isn't it? The feet is finally, officially gone. Dead, so. dead, yeah. Is it performant to draw a David Novel for both players? Yes, much more performant than um, than two extra players. Yeah. yeah. Because at this in this case when drawing a Dev Novel, you're not actually drawing like what you consider right now, right here in gameplay, which is technically considered a player. No. Instead you're just drawing the which is just the arrows or nodes that you're seeing on the screen. It's not processing any of the logic that will happen on player, like the combo, the story, the player stats, life meters, things like that, which all add up to a performance hit. Yep. Because of this, you can attach, you can you can use the note, note field to do flexible things, like, I don't know, maybe you want it as a uh, as an object that plays a fake chart that isn't available in the song via Lua, you can just do that. Just attach a table with the steps, put them into the field, and it'll be good, you can play it. You can make the node field be like a preview example, maybe like a song for you, even like you went to without, outside of game. Yeah. It's just choking the chart. Yeah, it's choking a bit there. Any other mm -hmm. questions? We've got a couple of minutes before we wrap up, so. Mm -hmm. You've got a few minutes, so if you want to wanna ask a question, mm -hmm. do it do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Do it, do it now. Is oh, yeah, it as, a quick, as a quick example, right now while it's showing, I just want to show the uh, the text of that scrolls with some other songs, but I'm gonna like mute the whole audio just to make sure it doesn't get hit. Yeah, because we need uh, this to be vaudeable, obviously. Yeah. So just to kind of show uh, on the bottom left, just to kind of give you some ideas how this can work with chart names here. What about karaoke mode? Yes, karaoke mode's coming. It's just I've got to get off my ass and do all the microphone stuff for you. <laughs> We're probably going to model it on um, the defunct, um, what's it called? Um, SingStar style Sing Star, yeah. from years and years ago when I was younger yeah. and even younger. All those, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the wedge of CDs that you get from the PS2, that era. Yeah. I've already got the passes written, but I've just got to get the the, uh, the stuff done, and because we need to read, re, we need to we need to completely revamp the lyric system, and we're going to add we're going to add proper subtitle support for you, because again, that's been massively requested. So if you want to do like you want to download fancy subtitles for your anime music stuff, and yeah, you want that as. Yeah, you want that dot s? And yeah, the dot s file. <laughs> SS, SRT and it is. Um, <laughs> dot sub should be supported. So um, yeah, we'll add we'll add proper support for those. So. No questions for Mark. It's okay. No one else. Because otherwise, I'm going to wrap up. You've got time to ask if you want if you've got something burning on your mind. No, Daniel, simply no. You know. <laughs> Unless you can rewind to the beginning of the stream because there were some things, like the new scrolling text. 
Yeah, Jose has been. You can rewind. R- 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 rewind. Um, yeah, we've been busy on the engine rather than just mm-hmm. the, the themes. Um, mm-hmm. Part of July for me and Jaws is literally just working on on the UI. So yeah. we're not sure how many themes are going to be concluded by the Steam release, but we're hoping for the main core ones are going to be in a decent state for people to use. Yep. So if you're looking at the core the core games, they're on the Wikipedia. They'll have core next to them. Yeah. Alright, I think then we're done in rings. Yeah, I think we're done. No other questions. Alright, well, thank you for joining us. I know we need to stream more and we will get on it. So, you know, do... Um, Follow, like, subscribe, ring the bell. No, there's no bell on this, is there? <laughs> no, well, no bell. actually there is, but I think it enables it by default. Yeah, follow, like, subscribe, ding the bell. You know, today's... Um, leave a like, put a put a comment in the comment section below. Yeah, the, yeah. this the, today's today's theme was, was sponsored by, I don't know, gravy gravy biscuits or whatever. I don't know. I couldn't think of anything off the top of my head. Yes, T- today I there's like, a... I can obliterate the bell and flood the comment section with... To, today the stream has been sponsored by a uh, squirrel's meal that was way too greasy. Yeah, my, my KFC that was really bad. So yeah, we'll, do <laughs> we'll do that. Go so back KFC remember, kids. just to wrap up, we had a. We're going to be releasing on Steam on the 29th of August, and the official Alpha 5 4.99 oh. preview Alpha Alpha program will be starting in the middle of July. For those of you that want to be part of that, okay. So. Thank you again for joining us. And, uh, come and bug us on the Discord server if you need anything. And oh, that's it. Me. Goodbye, guys. Hit me in the face of the door. Okay, I'm going to be rating someone. He's not. They're not playing Outfox at the moment, but they are a VTuber who that actually has awesome. played Outfox on stream a few times. No one cares. Just rate him. Enjoyed it. But anyway. <laughs> MassiveExposition.com.org. Uh, exposition, yeah. Oh, come on. I'm not sure how many people actually know. Oh, wait. Whoops. I've... I didn't know, know you had to keep the dialogue up to do that. Whoops. Uh, <laughs> this, this guy. You, you can't make it up. <laughs> you can't make it up. Our, our main social media engineer, everyone. Yeah. Uh, I guess they changed how the raid button in Stream Manager works since the last time I used it, so. <laughs>